Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to Project Hospital where today we have a very clear goal in mind and that goal is to build ourselves a shiny new traumatology clinic because if we do that we then get access to the Protect Care Insurance Company, they're going to send 10 more people our way, paying way above average for their treatments which is very nice, we make more money, we buy more tea and cake and everything is all very wonderful with the world and of course we've planned out the entire traumatology department, we did that at the end of the previous part and there it is in all of its blueprinted glory so that's what the whole department is going to look like but right now we don't need to build all of this to get the insurance company on board because they only want the clinic side of things they're not bothered about the hospitalization side of things just yet they might be in the future but right now to get them on board we need to open the clinic side of things so i think let's get building shall we let's get building so the clinic is the waiting room here and at least one traumatology office we put two of them in because we know it's going to get busy so that's all we need to do. We have put a reception in. I know they're not essential, but it's quite nice to have a reception. And it does mean that we can hire another receptionist. And of course, if we hire another person, it means we get to have another spin on the wheel of names, which is always very exciting. So I think we'll get that in as well. So we want to basically build a little bit over here and of course, connect it up with some lovely corridors because we want people to be able to get to it. So I think that's what we do. So we've got about 65 grand right now a lot of our money is going to go on foundations. But here we go. Let's spend a great pile of money on floor. So I think we need a corridor coming in from here, don't we? So that's our main emergency bit. So that's going to come up to, say, just there. So that's fine. So that's $3,500 already on a relatively teeny tiny bit of corridor. But OK, fine. That's how much it costs. And then we drag that all the way up there to cover the reception, the waiting area, and the two doctor office type things. That's nine and a half thousand dollars. That's very expensive indeed, but there we go. There we go. So now we can actually put these in now. We've got some floor to actually build upon. But then thinking about it, do we want to have that bit of corridor going in like that? And then a little bit over there linking up to our sort of, uh, whatever that is, critical sort of care department over there, whatever it is. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. It's not going to be that much, is it? It's not going to be that expensive. It's only another three and a half thousand plus a little tiny bit more. It's all absolutely fine. So there we go. There we go. It can now loop round so you can get in from here or you can get in from over there, which is quite good. OK, so that's good. Now we need walls. And then, of course, all the things that go in here as well. And we've got just under 50 grand. I'm not entirely convinced that's going to be enough money. But here we go. Um, ah, we have to pick a new colour. We need to pick a new colour of wall. Oh, that's very exciting. Okay, hang on a second. So over here in, um, yeah, what is it? Critical care, intensive care, whatever. That one there, which doesn't get used very often and was very expensive. That's red. Emergency is blue. That's fine. The admin stuff is kind of pink, isn't it? Um, the labs are that kind of, are they that kind of colour? Yellowy colour. Um, we've got a sort of a peach colour or sort of an orange colour over here. We haven't got green. We haven't got any green quite yet. Why don't we have that colour green for the walls of our lovely new traumatology clinic? Hang on a second though, hang on. What we do need to do is we need to drip a drop of that, but that bit up to there is still going to be our emergency department because there's going to be another doctor office just there. So that still needs to be the blue walls for now. So hang on, rotate that round and draw that on. Okay, and then we can remove that wall there. There we go. Right, and then do you know what? Whilst we're here, just so I can see what it looks like, we are going to drip a drop that just, no, hang on, floors, let's press the right thing, drop of the floor just there and put that in like that. So now we can see that emergency runs to just here and then that's kind of it. And then we want the green for over here. So let's get the flooring in. I know it's not important, but yeah, well, yeah it is important because people like walking on nice floors. So let's have it like that. And then what do we do with this bit here? Because is that a sort of bathroom that belongs to, does it belong to traumatology or does it belong to intensive care? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that thing there, that's a cleaning cupboard that's part of traumatology. So I would say that is going to be traumatology. Let's have that as traumatology. Hang on a minute. Hang on. What we'll do is go to uh, traumatology. Uh, corridor why do we not have corridor set up yet i think we do oh because i haven't got walls or anything that's why so that corridor can go over there and then we shall have 
I mean, that's a very big restroom there, isn't it? That's a very, very big restroom. If we make that a restroom, that's going to be huge. I mean, we could fit something else in over here, possibly. Um, we could, we could put another elevator in. We could drop one of those in. That'd be quite good, wouldn't it? That'd be quite handy. And we know now they take up sort of three by four, not four by four, as it kind of implies over here, because they have to kind of stick out into a corridor. So maybe over here could, and there's an elevator there, but yeah, more elevators is going to be really helpful. How about then, actually, we have an elevator just, oh, hang on, what did I just do? Elevator planner, like that. Uh, elevator planner is a minimum size. <sighs> okay, fine, fine. We'll do it like that. Oh, hang on, hang on. Did I do it the wrong size before? Like that? No, it doesn't like it. Okay, we'll have it like that then, sticking out into the corridor in a very silly way. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to have a little bit of something down here. What could we put in this corner? Unless we do just make that now big, a big restroom. It could just be a huge big restroom. That'd be okay. That's fine. So how about then we go like that and we go like that. Because, you know, it might be busy over here. There might be lots of people around this part and they need lots of uh, lots of toilet facilities. So there we go. That's absolutely fine. Why is that sort of... Oh, because there's no flooring there. That's why. It's got stripy lines because there's no floor there. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Right, so now we come back onto walls because they're also quite important, apparently. So let's drip a drop. Hang on, go back to walls. Uh, drop a that bit and then change it to green, which is very good. And then we'll kind of come that way. So that can go out like that. How is that going to look? Yeah, that looks okay. I quite like that. Right, so then we'll cap that off at the end there. Right, receptions are generally the same sort of thing, aren't they? They have the same kind of walls and such like, I think. Um, I mean, that doesn't have any walls at all. That's fine. Um, so yeah, so across the back here, we'll have that like that. That can all be open. They don't need to be rooms as such. But then, yes, the doctor rooms. How about we go and drop the walls of those because that is kind of a doctor room and then we'll just make it green. I'm not entirely sure what those walls are like. What are they like? Hang on a minute. Let's go and have a look. Um, oh, they've got like a kind of a wooden sort of panel stripe type thing in them. That's OK. So we'll have that going like that and then across the back. And then across that side and across that side, of course. And then across this side as well. Okay, so boop like that. So that's them all sorted. But then, of course, we have these bits here that need to be done. So I think put them back on like that. And that can run along like that. And that can run down to, I can't see anything. That can run down to there. Okay, so that's looking pretty good for now. Then I think we need to cap this bit off for the moment. So that just needs a big wall going across like that and a big wall coming over like that. And then we can knock down that bit there and that's all wonderful. So now people can walk through from that side or from that side. Okay, I'm liking that. That's feeling pretty good. Right, we need some flooring over here. So hang on, hang on. What do we have for the flooring for other waiting areas? So let's grab that one. Are they two different ones? That looks like that one. And that's, I oh, know it is that one. Oh, okay, fine. It's hardwood flooring. Okay, so hardwood flooring can go into there. And do you know what? Let's have a slight change um, of hardwood flooring to go into where the reception is. We'll have that. Do you know what? We might want to make that a little bit bigger because there might be a lot of people waiting over here with various traumatological injuries. So how about we make that a teeny tiny bit bigger. Let's go to there, go to waiting room and just go boop like that. There we go. That looks okay. And let's get these set up now. So here we go. We're going to need a receptionist. We'll put them, there is going to be a wall there, isn't there? So we'll put them just there. That's absolutely fine. So how about we get, um, I quite like the counters. I quite like the counters. I think we can put stuff behind them, can't we? So we could have sort of a little counter bit going like that. Can we fit in the middle there? Um, it's not a pharmacy desk, but um, yeah, advice. Mandatory equipment for receptions and shops. A PC placed on top will create a workspace. Yeah, okay, that'll do. So we'll have one of them just there, say, and another one there. And then we want a right side for the counter and a left side for the counter. 
And then can we just have... I kind of just want a flat bit. I kind of wanted it to go like that. Oh, but it can't do that. Oh, botherations. Okay, never mind. Never mind. That's fine. So it can sit sort of side on. That's okay. Uh, and then we'll have... Is that too big? I think it might be a bit big. Do we just need it too wide? It's a bit big, isn't it? I think that might be slightly too grand now. Um, hang on. Can we put a chair behind one of those bits? Yes, we can. I think maybe it would look better if it just sort of sat in the middle. Do you know what? I'm, I'm undoing that. Hang on. Shifty them out the way for now. Move them out of the way. Put that like that. And do you know what? Push it back one as well. Yeah, I think that'll do. That will do quite nicely. So we'll pop a chair just there. We'll have a proper PC like that. I think that's now a valid sort of one of these. That's a valid reception area. I mean, should we just make it all the same flooring and push the waiting area out even more? It's a very big waiting area. I'll give you that. But, you know, that's fine. That's what we do in the Geek But Everything is big and grand. Um, I think maybe, I think maybe that's what we do. I think that might be our best approach to possibly just, you know, get that sort of pushed out into there to make even more space for the waiting area. Because that's where all the things are going to go. The receptionist is just a, you know, a friendly person to point you in the right direction and do a bit of triage or whatever. So I think that's what we do. So hang on. Let's get that sorted as well. So waiting room. Um, that can come down like that, I would say. Although, hang on. Hang on. Do they, when they come over here, they do sit and wait to then go and talk to the receptionist. And then they go to the waiting area. So maybe actually, no, maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe we need a set of seats over here to go and talk to the receptionist. And then a set of seats over there to actually wait to go into the sort of doctor rooms. Maybe that's what we should have. Hang on. Right, we're, going, we're undoing that again. Edit, undo. Like that. Um, okay, so let's get in some chairs. Let's get in modern benches because these are quite nice. So you don't want too many over there, I don't think. So we'll have... We'll just have a set of eight of these, like that, I think. That's quite nice. And then we will have... Um, oh, look at that. I quite like these things. I quite like those. Can we have a little... Can we, Where can we put this? Oh, hang on. Paper holder. Very important. Got to look important. Um, where could we put some of these things? It's like a cabinet with drawers. I like the look of that. Or just a little kind of table. Hang on. Hang on. Is there a coffee table? I think it's on the next one, is it? No, there's not a coffee table. Okay, do you know what we will have then? We'll put the drinks over there, that's fine. Um, we will have some lovely plants. Look, there's the coffee table. Um, do you know what? We will put a coffee table there and a coffee table there. Uh, we'll pop a clock on the wall behind there, because that would make sense. Um, and then on the coffee table, we've gone for wooden ones rather than the, the glass ones. Um, we shall have ourselves... Um, a selection of lovely things. Hang on, hang on. Can we click back into there? So we'll have some fruit juice on that one. We can't put fruit juice. Ah, no, we can now if we put it sideways. <laughs> we have to orient the fruit juice correctly, of course. Um, and then on here, were there not other things? Were there not like food things? Were there not food things? I'm fairly certain there were like snacks or whatever on one of these. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know what we can put on there now. We'll just leave that maybe. Do you know what? We'll put some files on there. We'll pretend they're magazines. They can be interesting magazines for you to read whilst you wait. And then, of course, we want some plants as well. So hang on a second. Um, let's get that one just there and that one just there. There we go. Wonderful. And is that a valid thing? Uh, yes, it is. It's a valid reception. The waiting room is valid. But I think maybe we might need to put something in there. We might just sort that out a little bit because uh, it's a little bit barren right now, isn't it? And then, of course, we have the two rooms to get set up as well over there with forty two and a half thousand ish dollars left. I think we'll be OK. I think we'll be absolutely fine. So there we go. One room done on to the next. So next up, let's get the waiting room done. Although I do think we need to put the doors in on the doctor kind of traumatology office things over there first. So then we can put things along that wall, like tables or vending machines or whatever. So maybe we do need to get the doors in first. I mean, what doors do they all have on the other rooms? Just a kind of a classic white door. Do you know what? That'll do. That'll absolutely do. And we'll put them, maybe we'll put them in the middle. 
like that. So bang in the middle like that, bang in the middle like that. I like that. Right, and then back we go to here. So again, we want some modern benches because I like those, but I think along that back wall there, we have all sorts of exciting bits and bobs. We have vending machines and water dispensers and tables with fruit juice and other stuff like that. So let's get those in. And also we do need to actually put in some of the queuing machines as well. Hang on a minute, hang on, hang on. The info TVs could go here, look. We could have one just there and one just there. I quite like that. And do you know what as well? We'll pop one on that wall as well, just in case your seat's you know, facing that way or whatever. So there we go, that's quite good. Um, and then, yeah, we'll get some of the benches in. So let's put the benches, let's have a row like that. And they can be sort of back to back because that seems to make sense. So pop them like that. But then we can't really put any more over there because there's not going to be that much room. So for example, if we had one that that's a little bit near to the door, I think. Hang on, let's move those over. So that's too close. That's about as near as I'd want them to be to the door. So if we put those like that, look, pop them in like so now is that going to be the best way around to do it or do we turn it round and have them going like that sort of you know following the the grain of the wood on the floor maybe we do that look so we have one like that and one like that do you know what that's okay i think i prefer that so we need to move some of those out of the way hang on a second so like that yes i think that's going to work out better and then you can sort of, you can sit opposite people and that'll encourage, you know, a little community and people can have a chat about their ailments and all the terrible things that's wrong with them and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get a couple more modern benches in. There we go. And we can seat another, what's that, four people as well, which is quite good. Okay, so that's that done. We do now need some queuing machine things. So I think if we put one there and one just there... And then we get the all important plants to go next to those. Um, so let's have, let's have, I like the big spiky plants. Let's have a couple of big spiky plants like that. Very good. And then, um, yeah, we've got that wall to have all sorts of bits and bobs on. Can we have some posters? Can we have some posters along there? That could be quite fun. Oh, a bin, we bins. Hang on a second. Um, yeah, we'll pop a bin into that corner there because that's quite important. And we'll have a bin next to the... Um, sort of uh, check-in desk thing as well, just in case. Um, and then, yeah, can we have some posters? I mean, this is about traumatology. So we should have posters about, I mean, it's not about tennis elbow, is it? Have we got any other ones? Um, accidents, yes, that seems sort of the thing, doesn't it? So accidents and, um, I don't know, blood donors. That might be quite a good thing. So there you go, a couple of posters on the wall, because that's sort of hospitally, isn't it? And then along here, yes, we want to get all the other bits and bobs. Let's have a clock actually hang on. Pop a clock just there. And we'll put one just there as well, just in case you're looking that way. So you don't have to turn all the way around. Um, and then, yeah, across the back here, let's get all sorts of lovely things. So let's get, we want at least a water dispenser. So we'll put the, we can't put anything there now. We'll have to put some tables under there. So how about a water dispenser just there and then also a bin so let's put a little kind of uh, trash bin type thing pop that into the corner like that and then we can have a couple of the coffee tables underneath the screen and the clock like that and then over here we can have a vending machine and we can have a coffee and tea vending machine because it still annoys me um oh oh hang on that's green that's green already to match the thing, but that one isn't. Can we change it to green, please? Oh, that's perfect. We can't change the color of that, can we? Can we change the color of the water machine? I don't think we can. We can't change the color of the bins, can we? Uh, no, we can't change the color of the bins. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, so I think that looks pretty good. We'll leave a little gap there. I think there can be a gap just there. That's absolutely fine. Um, or if there is a gap there, could we possibly... I mean, okay, part of me is thinking... You should put a bin there. But part of me is thinking put a plant there because, you know, the plants are good and it makes it feel lovely and kind of nice and fresh and airy. Um, or do we put a bin there? Because it would make sense if you've got some coffee and, you, you I don't know, you've you've finished your drink. You, you're so desperate for your coffee drink, for your coffee fix, that you drink it right there and then out of the cup. And then you have to go all the way there to put stuff in the bin. You could just chuck it into the bin just there. 
maybe that is the best course of action, isn't it? So hang on a second, get another one of those, rotate it around like that. Okay, and then we have space for two things on the table, which is very exciting. So let's go back to here. So fruit juice, yes, we'll put that on the table. I am fairly certain there is other stuff. There's like trays of sandwiches or cakes or whatever. I am fairly certain that that is a thing. So hang on, fruit juice is there. Yeah, fruit, look. There's fresh fruit, there's a fresh fruit stand, which is quite nice. It's in here. I'm fairly certain it's in there somewhere. Um, tasty sandwiches. There we go. That's what I was thinking of. There was, I swear there was a donuts one. I swear there was a donuts one somewhere once upon a time. We might put some tasty sandwiches out there. Um, but yeah, I thought there were donuts. Um, hang on, hang on. Could we? Where, there, there are the donuts. There, there we go. Pop the donuts in. Oh, yes. That's very good. So you might be kind of horribly injured, which is why you're here, but you can go and have a nice, uh, nice fruit drink and a donut to go with it because we look after you here at our wonderful hospital. Okay, so that's that room set up, which is good. So the waiting room now all set up and ready to go. And then we kind of, are they the same size? Hang on. Are both of those rooms the same size? It might be the angle we're at, but that one looks a bit smaller. Hang on a second. I'm not entirely sure. So foundation wise, that is, I can't even see that. That's five, and that one is five. It's just the angle we're at. It's the angle. Okay, so now we need to get both of those rooms set up to do uh, to do doctory stuff. Okay, so it looks like a classic doctor office. So what we'll do is we'll set one up, and then maybe could we could we mirror it? It might be just worth setting it up exactly the same because it makes life easier, doesn't it? Um, okay, let's get all this in, shall we? So hang on. Firstly. We need a desk. Let's have a fancy glass desk. Show it. Oh, hang on though. Hang on. We could have a green desk to go with the green department. That actually makes more sense. Um, let's put the desk sort of there. We can put some more stuff behind there. Do you know, we'll build them both at the same time and we shall mirror them. We'll mirror them to make it look a little bit different. Um, okay, so the bin can go... Uh, by, hang on, let's put the exam table in first because that's quite important. Also, can we have it green, please? This is wonderful. Look how lovely and green everything can be. It's marvellous. Right, so I think we put the examination tables in like that. Do we put them down here, possibly? They can go right against the wall, but when people come in, they're going to want to sit and chat to the doctor. So we need a chair or something in there or a comfy sofa or whatever. Hang on, hang on. Can we grab one of the comfy sofas um yeah one of those but no, that's on the wall there grab one of those make it green please um and then yes we'll put it into here because i like the idea that the you know the patients sit on a nice comfy sofa and have a chat with the doctor about their current woes right and then the examination table right might possibly have to go oh, we can go against that wall look we can just cram it right into ah it works on this side but not on that side, because of course it's not going to fit. Okay, maybe we can't mirror the rooms. Okay, do you know what? It's fine. We'll sort one room, and then the rest of it we'll just we'll just copy. We'll just copy that room. It's fine. So that room, but no, 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 that room's not the best because it doesn't fit properly. Hang on, I'm moving things, moving things around. There we go. It's all fine. Um, so yeah, exam table. We can then put that like that. And it's in the corner and it's fine. Um, then we need to get the examination lamp, which can go just there, because that makes sense. Um, and then we've got the you know, bins and such like. Hang on. We want to get a printer to put onto their desk and a PC and a chair. Why can't I see the chairs? Where are your chairs? There we go. Office chair, fancy office chair. Make it green, of course. Right, there we go. So that's all that sorted. So we're getting through quite a lot of stuff anyway. Um, a scrubbing sink. I quite like that because you need to wash your hands. So we'll have a scrubbing sink in that corner. And then across the back, we can have all sorts of various cabinets and things. So yeah, tall equipment cabinet. Boom, keeping on the money. We're still on 36 grand. That's not too bad at all. And one of those does cover quite a lot of stuff. Because look, now we don't have to have quite so many things. Um, the eye test could go... Um, I mean, the eye test should go there, really, shouldn't it? Can we move the scrubbing cabinet thing into the corner, maybe? Um, hang on. 
Let's have it like that. Because then if you're sat on the thing here, if you're sat on the examination table thing, you should be looking over there to do your eye test because you're looking directly over there. So that makes sense. Um, and then we need the CRP scan. And I know we only need one of those, but I like having two. I like imagining that they use them for different things. So the one without the lid is for not quite so hazardous biohazards. And the one with the red lid is a bit more dangerous. And of course, red means danger. So maybe we'll pop that into the corner and that down there as well. I quite like that. And then we just need a little table for the CRP scan. So let's get, um, I mean, a mobile equi equipment cabinet. They do seem quite good. Can we have a green one of those, please? Because that's got to be handy. A mobile one of those has got to be useful. But uh, yeah, we still need a table to put the, um, the CRP scan thing on. I mean, how about one of those? Does it fit on one of those? That'd be, if please fit on one of those. It's gonna be really handy. Yay, it fits on one of those. It doesn't look like it should fit on one of those, but it does. Okay, and also we do want to get a, um, a whiteboard in just in case we have a doctor who can make use of the whiteboard. So let, hang on, can we move that along? No, because that gets in the way of something. I'm not entirely sure what it gets in the way of, but it gets in the way of a thing. Um, okay. So the whiteboard, hang on, we could put that behind there, put that to there, and then have the whiteboard there. Okay, so if we do get a doctor with the, whatever it is, advanced diagnosis or whatever it is, they can use that thing. So that's quite good. Um, and then we need some more exciting things because yeah, it's a functional room, that's fine. It's not very exciting, is it? I mean, it doesn't have a plant in it for starters, which is an absolute tragedy. So let's get a plant. Um, let's get one of those, look. Um, we'll pop that. Oh, crikey. Ah, in the corner, look. In the corner. It's perfect. There we go. Also, a bin wouldn't go amiss, I don't think. Maybe like that, look. Um, and then, yeah, some stuff on the walls. How about a thing about your skull? So, uh, yeah, a poster about a skull. That's quite nice. And then what else can we have? Coffee tables and various other bits and bobs. First aid kit, a decoration. You think that might be quite important. We'll pop a first aid kit on the wall. It's a hundred dollars, but that's quite good for a hospital. Surely that's an important thing. Um, and then what else can we have? What else can we have? So we could put something on the wall over there, maybe a heart poster. Uh, no, because it interferes with the plant, apparently, <laughs> which is a bit weird. Can we rotate it around? Can anything go on that wall? Uh, there's a gap there, look. So we'll put a picture of a, uh, a sort of a heart poster thing over there. And I think that will do. I don't think we can fit too much in. Uh, well, no, hang on, hang on, a clock. We want to get a clock because that's kind of important. So hang on. Um, yeah, like that. Just so the doctor can see what time it is and such. And I think that will do. I think that's okay. So we've got plants in there, which is good. Got some pictures on the wall. It's quite nice. Got ourselves a first aid kit. Obviously a very important thing to have. We haven't got a table with anything else on like files or whatever, but we are pushed for space. Um, we do need floor. We need flooring. Kind of forgot about the flooring. Hang on, hang on. Uh, we shall grab, go to there, grab that flooring and then make it green. So it's the bottom right one, the dark lino flooring. Okay, so... If we pop that into there, we should now be able to see what that looks like. I quite like that. That looks good. That looks very good. Okay, and then we just copy that. We can just do this kind of copying thing and we can just go whoop like that and then just drop it straight over there. Brilliant. Five grand it took to get one of those in. So we've still got 30 grand left. I'm very impressed. I'm very surprised. I'm very impressed as well. Okay, so two of those are now ready to go. We've got a waiting area, which looks very good indeed because there are donuts and drinks as a refreshment area. Uh, got a little reception area, which is very nice, again, with drinks and some magazines to read. We could, maybe, with a little bit of our remaining money, we could get the cleaning cupboard set up. I think that might be a good idea. And then possibly as well, we could do with getting the sort of the bathroom set up. Because if you're over here, you need the loo, you kind of have to walk all the way round to here. Which isn't you know, a million miles away, but it'd be easier if there was one just there. But as well, I do think a cleaning cupboard and a janitor is going to be quite a handy thing for here. 
because you know this is traumatology. People are going to come in in various stages of trauma, as the name would imply, uh, which might mean they might you know, do a little bit of the bleeding. So we might need a janitor to come and clean things up. So how about we get in the um, little janitor cupboard thing as well? They also do have a particular wall type, don't they? Hang on. Let's go and grab... Uh, where Where's the janitor cupboards? Where are they all? Hang on a minute. Hang on. There's one over here, definitely. So, um, yeah, pick up that wall there. Right, it's that one there. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we'll get that in place. We'll get the door and all that kind of stuff in. Can't remember what the floor is for these either. But okay, so drag that in. Plop that into place. Very good. Um, the door is going to be a restricted area door. And we'll just put that wherever. Uh, put it slight. Now let's put it so it's on the end of the corridor, so you can go. Nope, don't go in there, please. Um, the floor needs to be set. So hang on a second. Can't recall what we do with the flooring in the janitor things. It's the sort of cross hatchy one. Okay, that's fine. Um, like that, and then it's just a case of putting things in here. So I mean, the shelves are the important thing. So let's have a couple of those. A couple of important shelves. Um, bucket cart. We'll have two of those, like that. And then in the corner we'll have... Do you know what? It's the edge of the hospital. We can have a window. Oh, it's a glorious moment. We don't have many windows in the hospital. But look, we've got a window in this room. Very nice. <laughs> we need to make the most of our windows. I mean, yeah, we could. Oh, look. I completely forgot. That's a corridor. We can have windows along the corridor. Oh, this is very exciting. Hang on, we can have a window there. Um... And then we can have another window there, and a window there, and a window there, and a window... Oh, yes. There's actual natural light coming into the hospital, everybody. It is a wonderful moment. Okay, good. That's very exciting. Okay. Right, back we go to over here. Hang on. Got distracted. Sorry. Um, yeah, let's have... Um, oh, yeah, we'll have a bin. Put a bin in the corner. That makes sense. And then we just want a sink, just so the, you know, the janitor can wash their hands, which would make sense. So we'll pop that into the corner, and I think we're ready to go. I think we're, apart from people, we need people, Penge, that would help, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so here we go. Let's hire, we're going to need nighttime people, aren't we? We're going to have to hire a daytime receptionist and a nighttime receptionist. Then we need to get, I would say, two daytime doctors and maybe one nighttime doctor. And then a daytime and a nighttime janitor. Oh, our wage bill is going to go up loads. Okay, right, so here we go. Um, who can we hire to be one of our wonderful receptionists. Um, oh, crikeys. Okay. People with secrets. Um, long commute and long commute. That's not good. You don't take free time breaks. Hang on, what's that? You work more efficiently in the day and you're a fresh parent. Rest levels decrease faster. Okay. Um, receptionist 41%. You are the best receptionist. You do have one hidden perk, however. We can reveal it for a thousand of our monies. Is it worth it? Or do we take the risk with Frank at the minute? Do you know what, Frank? You can come in because you work better in the day. So there we go. You can be a daytime person. Then we need a nighttime person. So hang on a minute. Receptionist skill. Um, we might have to reveal other people's. We might need to reveal the perks now. Because you've got two. You've got one. You've only got... Oh, no, you're not very good. Receptionist of 8%. That's not good at all. It might be you. Karen Hill. Reception is 39%. Do you know what? Yeah, you can come in and do that then, please. So there's two people. So, of course, we'll go and spin the wheel of names in a second. We'll get all the other people in as well. Um, right, so we need two daytime doctors, I would say. So let's make sure that we've got some good people on board. Um, so, okay, hang on. Yeah, specialised in traumatology. Um, it's got to be Rachel Lewis. Because Rachel Lewis has traumatology of 92%. Also, she has trauma surgery of 42%. So eventually, when we do get all the hospitalization stuff set up, we could move her over to be one of our trauma surgeons. Maybe we do that. Okay, right. Rachel Lewis, in you come for now. And there we go. Yes, we can now get the insurance company on board. Hang on, we'll do that in a second. Um, and then we'll have a nighttime person. Um, oh, hang on. Kate Moore works better in the day, but you are only a tier three. They're all tier three people. Oh, is it worth? Hang on. What do we do? Two and a half grand. It's a lot of money to find some more people. But I think we might need to. I think we might need to. 
Um, oh, hang on, no. We just re I, think I get very confused with this whole thing here. So we, we reorganize it by advanced diagnosis, which says zero, and it comes up with all these people that have got it. I don't fully understand, but okay, fine. Um, yeah, all these people are quite good. So Nancy Hall, uh, what's that? You're a diagnostic genius. Yeah, I think that's quite good for this position. Hang on. Night owl, ah, but long commute. You can often be late for work. Bother. Um, I mean, this is for the daytime one, isn't it? This is for the day shift. So let's get you in because you're a diagnostic genius. And then we need a nighttime person. I don't know. Who do we get then? I don't really know. So you've got 39% or we could get you in. But yes, you do have the long commute. You've got 63%. Hang on. So your rest levels decrease slower and use your free time to study. So it might be that Margaret Hall in her free time does get better at doing traumatology and advanced diagnosis. But William Lewis is immediately better for not that much more money, but he might possibly be late quite a bit. Um, Do we take the risk? Do we take the risk on William Lewis, who's an established good person at these sort of skills? Or do we go for Margaret Hall, which is, yeah, sort of less skills, but she might actually get better. I don't know what the best thing is to do. Although he's much better at diagnosis and various other bits and bobs. We'll take you. We'll take you, William Lewis. Just please don't be late. Please don't be late. So there you go. So we have our nighttime person. Uh, and then we need... I mean, do we need two janitors? Probably, because people might come in at night time and have various, you know, horrible blood-related trauma injuries. So let's get a daytime one in and a nighttime one. Um, okay, so Thomas Hernandez, you're all good gift shop vendors, which isn't a skill I was kind of thinking about. What about a janitor skill? Oh, okay, you're all good at working gift shops anyway. I know you're not, actually. Um, okay, so, oh no, it's only Thomas Hernandez who's the good one. You do work better during the day, so you can come in during the day. Do we have a nighttime person to replace you? No, we don't. Not right now. I don't know if it's worth spending two and a half thousand dollars of our precious, precious money on getting that list refreshed so we can then pick a nighttime janitor. I don't know if that's a good use of our cash. Do you know what? I'm going to say right now that it isn't. We're not going to get a nighttime janitor just yet. But I think we are all ready to actually open up. Oh, we need to do the Wheel of Names. Of course we need to do the Wheel of Names. Hang on a second. That's vitally important. That's what the whole thing's about. Um, okay, so we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six new people are going to join us. That's very exciting. Okay, let's go and do some very lovely spinning of the Wheel of Names. Okay, so the Wheel of Names has spoken. Let's go meet the new team members, shall we? So on the day shift in reception, we have Alex, and that's all they wanted to be known as. So there you go, Alex. You're on the daytime shift in reception. And then covering the nighttime shift in reception is so much. And I do like that name. I appreciate a good pun. So there you go. So we have so much and Alex covering reception. And then go over to the doctors in traumatology. So over here, covering one of our two doctor positions in the daytime, we have potent potassium, which means we do have a Dr. Potassium in the hospital, which is very exciting indeed. So we have Dr. Potassium. And then also on the daytime shift, we have Dr. Flip Wizard McGee, which is wonderful. Now they did ask for their first name to be Doctor and their surname to be Flip Wizard McGee, but you can't fit Flip Wizard McGee into one of the sort of name boxes. It's too big, it chops the end off. So you've become Flip Wizard McGee, but very appropriately, you are a doctor. So it worked out okay in the end. So there you go. You are Dr. Flip Wizard McGee, which is very splendid. And then covering the night shift over in traumatology, we have Dr. Overall. Neil Overall joins the team, which is wonderful. And then, of course, our janitor over here. We welcome Bill Snively as one of our janitors who's working the day shift. So I think we are ready to open up. I think we can open up and sort this out. However... I think as well, what we need to do is we need to go and get them on board now, don't we? So Protect Care are saying, OK, yes, we're interested. We can have four insurance companies. We've only got three, but we'd like them to join. So I think if we say, yes, please send them to us, that's it. We've now got four goals, which is wonderful. So their current goal, one of 12 for Protect Care, is to treat five patients per day at traumatology. And if we do that, we get given a $5,000 government grant. I mean, okay, 
Okay, it's better than nothing. It's better than a punch to the head. But I mean, other ones have been like, yeah, you've been given 50 grand on that kind of stuff. Five grand does seem a little bit kind of, a little bit meager, but okay. I think we get time running and we see what happens. So here we go. What time is it? Right, it's midnight. It's midnight. So most people are going to be going home, but that's fine. So on until morning, I mean, in theory, we could get somebody in. We could get somebody coming in to trauma. Hang on, hang on. There is somebody there. Hang on, hang on. Um, but slow time now, stop. Look, somebody is in. Somebody's come in to traumatology. It's you. What's wrong with you, Barbara Jones? You have a rattlesnake bite. Oh dear, that sounds thoroughly unpleasant. Um, also, somebody is waiting for, hang on, what are you waiting for? CT scanning. Okay, do we need nighttime CT scanning? Hang on, can we go over to Peter Anderson? Uh, Peter Anderson, you're lurking around over there. You're in one of our wards, that's okay. Um, but yeah, we haven't got people manning these at night time. We haven't got people doing the MRI or the CT scanning. Do we need to get another person in? Or can you just wait until the morning? I mean, it would make sense to get somebody in, but then we have to pay a whole lot of other wages, don't we? But it does make sense to make sure that these are operating around the clock because it could save somebody's life, I suppose. Um, oh, do you know what? Go on then. Go on. We'll get some night shift people in as well. It's fine. So here we go. Who can we get to operate the whatever that is? What's that one? The CT room. Okay, so the CT scanner needs a night shift person. Um, yeah, radiology is what we want them to be good at. So 38, 32, 6 or 8. Okay, I would say that we should possibly go for Carol. Although, Carol works better in the day. Okay. Could we switch anybody round? You work better. You are better at night. Well, this is just absolutely perfect. Hang on a second. So if we get you on board, uh, you are a bit hungry. You have a fast metabolism, so your hunger increases faster. That's fine. Um, yeah, so if you go to work there in the day, but then can we swap you round? Can we say, uh, hang on, who's the other person? Who are you? Hang on a second. Oh, that's not gone well at all. You are... Uh, Lena Legato. Okay. So we have Lena Legato, and then we have ourselves. I mean, Carol White, we need to change anyway momentarily. So we'll sort this out, but we need to swap you round. Can we just sort of swap you about the place? That'd be quite good, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, we want you to be in the other job. So hang on. So we want Lena Legato to do that job. And then, no, not that button. The tiny button's there. And then Carol White to do that job. So Carol White better in the daytime, that's good. Lena Legato, better at nighttime. Also is a hedonist, okay, <laughs> fine. I mean, you should get on, because you have fast metabolism, so you like eating a lot anyway, uh, because you're always hungry, and you like eating a lot because you're a hedonist, so there you go. It'll be fine if you two bump into each other as you're starting and finishing your respective shift. So there we go. So Carol White going to workplace, and then we need somebody over here to do the MRI stuff. So currently we have Mojo, is Mojo better at working in the day or at night or whatever? No. Okay, that's fine. So we'll see who we can get on board now. So hang on. Radiology. We don't want these skills here, do we? So radiology. It's going to have to be Jordan Brown. Although Jordan Brown does have three very suspiciously hidden perks. What are you hiding from us, Jordan Brown? Hang on a minute. Let's reveal the perks. So you are a Spartan. Okay, I wouldn't have picked that up from looking at you. Uh, you're a hedonist, so you like eating the food. Um, and you're loyal. Takes 20% less salary when levelling up. Oh, okay, that's good. What's that one? Uh, you're an alcoholic. Oh, okay, Sarah Williams. And you live far away. Okay, <laughs> we might not go for you. Um, loyal and comforting. Okay, that's quite good. But yeah, we'll go for Jordan Brown because Jordan is better at doing the radiology. 32%. Now, the only thing is, hang on, how good are you? You are 42%. I imagine we get more people in the day than we do at night time. So I think that's okay. But you know what this means? We now have to go and spin the Wheel of Names another two times to welcome our two radiology folks. So now on the day shift in the CT scanner room, we have Sigourney Cooper. So welcome aboard Sigourney Cooper. And then on the night shift in the MRI room, we have the very wonderfully named Failed Sleep, which I thought was quite good for somebody who's working a night shift. So there we go, Sigourney Cooper, and we have Failed Sleep. Welcome aboard, you two. Now, hopefully, with that done, 
we should see somebody coming over here. They should actually go and get this person from their bed over here and wheel them over. So hang on. Let's, can we focus on them? Can we click on them? I think we should be able to. So if we do the weird kind of following thing, and then we just speed time on nice and quick, and I keep pressing one, two, and three, and that's not how the game works. So let's do that, look, and we shall follow them, and we'll see if they go anywhere. So yeah, they're being taken to one of the radiology rooms. So here we go, down into there, so they're having their CT thingamajig. Okay, this is good. This is very encouraging, though, because that's another job out of the way. And it means that, that person is doing something at night time. And then they're going back. We're not following them anymore. They're going back to their bed. But hopefully that helped. Yeah, I think that got the diagnosis over to carpal tunnel syndrome, which is quite good. Oh, hang on. Hang on. They're being carted away somewhere else now. Um, hang on a minute. Where are you going? Um, oh, no. Joseph Walker hasn't been seen by a doctor for a very long time. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. You you wait there a second. Um, oh, yes, we forgot about this. Didn't we look at this before? We haven't got any nighttime doctors over in orthopedics. Okay, I think possibly we might need to sort that out. Um, hang on a minute. Um, orthopedics is that one. Um, yeah, we have no nighttime doctors. So those people are waiting for a doctor that isn't going to be there for another, what, four or five hours? So maybe we should get a nighttime doctor in as well. Okay, hang on a second. Um, oh, okay. These people aren't brilliant at orthopedics. Um, we have, hang on, they've kind of all revealed their skills, which is quite good. Are they the same people as before? They're the same people as before. I, no, they're not. But a lot of their skills, well, their traits, whatever, are revealed. Apart from Jordan Gonzalez, who has something to hide. Very suspicious. Um, I mean, you're quite good at orthopedics. However, you're also an alcoholic people person hard worker. I don't like the alcoholic trait, though. That's not good. Um, okay, orthopedics or just advanced diagnosis. Um, we could... Oh, look, what? See, I don't understand. You click orthopedics and it brings up these people here. And then you click Advanced Diagnosis and it brings up Brooke Lee, who is amazing at orthopedics and also has 14% Advanced Diagnosis. Or Paul Jackson, who's even better. Oh, Paul Jackson lives a little bit far away. They all live a bit far away. Oh, this is a bit rubbish. And you're slow. Okay, Brooke Lee, we're not going to have you. Um, you're a hard worker. These are all... They're all like good in terms of their numbers, but their traits are not good. Um, I wonder, do we spend... Two and a half grand. Again, it's a lot of money, but we do need to get somebody in. And I'd like it if we could get somebody that's good. Um, yeah, I think we need to get somebody in that's a bit better than these. So, okay, fine. We'll bite the bullet and spend two and a half grand botherations. Um, okay, right. Advanced diagnosis. These people seem good. So, orthopedics, 86. Advanced diagnosis, 3%. You've got 89 and 8. Uh, you've got 67% orthopedics, but 38% advanced diagnosis. So you're quite good at that. Oh, and you've all got, a lot of you've got secrets. Hang on, let's reveal the secrets as well, because we didn't need the money for anything. Um, you're also a hedonist. Okay, quite a lot of them popping up. And you're a germaphobe. Okay, that's fine. Um, you are, you what is that? Resistance, so your rest levels decrease slower. And you're a hard worker. But again, we know that's a bit of a, sort of a double-edged sword type thing. Um, you are unpleasant. We're not going to have you. And you're depressed. Always has a depressed modifier applied to their satisfaction. Oh, that's a bit sad, John Garcia. Have a chat to somebody about that, please. Um, and comforting. Okay. I think we might get Mark Baker in. Mark does seem to be the best candidate. I don't want to spend another two and a half grand to get more people and then another thousand on looking at their traits. So let's get Mark Baker in. But of course, that also means we have to do even more wheel of names spinning. Hang on a minute. The wheel of names is going to fall off, I think, in a minute. I might need to go and sort of, you know, make sure it's not going to collapse. But uh, yeah, OK, right. Here we go. Another spin is underway. And we welcome David Lee to the nighttime shift over here in orthopedics. So hopefully now... We should see people going into there. So if we do that, they should go into here now because there's a doctor available. You can go and have a chat with the doctor. Please don't get grumpy. Hang on. Do we need to prioritize you? Code blue you because you're getting a bit grumpy. We don't want you to leave. Also, your payment is quite a lot of money. 2,520 monies. We want to make sure that you stick around. I keep pressing one and two and three for the speed controls. That's not how it works. Have you just been called in? She's just been called in. 
even though this person here is a code blue, we don't care about that. They're going to leave. They're going to leave. They're going to take their two and a half grand with them. That's a bit of a shame. Oh, no, hang on. Hang on. They're nipping to get a drink. Okay, that's quite good. That's good for us. Hang on. So let's have a look over here then. So how are we doing over here? Uh, oh, where was the... Hang on. Where's the doctor over there? Where's... There should be a doctor in there, shouldn't there? It's a night shift. Are they are they down here? Is that you? That's Doctor of Parsnips working over in intensive care. Where's where's the doctor that should be over in that office? <laughs> Maybe they've they haven't nipped the loo. And oh, hang on, is it you? Um Neil Overall, yes, it's you. You're gonna go over there. Okay, now that's fine. That's okay. I'm alright with that. Right, let's move time on. Let's hope that we can see that person there. Could you hurry up and be treated, please? Yes, here we go. Right, he's going in, which is very good. You're going to a chair in the pharmacy. You've got an ankle sprain. You'll be fine. Right, okay, so let's make sure that you're okay. Um, treatment for patients diagnosis is not available. Joint surgery leg. Make it work quickly. The patient is getting ready to leave. Joseph Walker, you are proving to be very troublesome indeed. Okay, hang on a minute. So, pause time a second. What do we need to do with this? What do we need? You've got hospitalized joint surgery leg. Um, it's... Oh, hang on. There's no beds. Oh, really? Are all of our beds full? Oh, crikey's Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe, just maybe, we should have built a slightly bigger ward over here. Could we do something? Could we move at some point the high dependency unit from there to here, maybe? Move it over to just there and then have the bigger ward extending that way. That might make sense. But right now... We might need to get another high dependency bed and put him into that one. That might be our best course of action. Do you know what? Let's do that. Rather than lose him and him go away and bad mouth us and say that we're a bit rubbish, let's get that done. So we'll just, um, yeah, we'll have that set up there, please. I imagine it's very expensive, but okay. Six grand. Brilliant. Okay, there we go. Um, so we're not going to make any money on this, which is unfortunate, but never mind. I keep pressing one. Um, okay, so let's get you. So, yes, you can go to high dependency hospitalization. That's absolutely fine. So in you pop. I love the way you just go and get in bed yourself. How do you know which one to get? I mean, there's only one available, but you thought maybe you'd be escorted there. But OK, right. That sorted that out. Yeah, maybe we do need maybe we do need a different thing. We do need a different um, high dependency unit that could go, say, just there. And then we could put that as a bigger ward. Because that is full. That's got four people in right now overnight. And that's, you know, it's busy. And the three people in there have got seven people in orthopedics overnight. That's that's very busy. How are we doing elsewhere? Got our doctor over here, not doing too much at all. Um, Joe, okay, straight. Hang on, hang on. No, no, there's somebody else come in. Hello, you have a microwave burn. Oh my goodness me, how on earth do we treat a microwave burn? Ice wrap, analgesics, emergency care. Wow. Okay, right. You have a microwave burn. I don't know how that happened. Uh, does it mean like like the actual microwaves themselves? You've not like put something in the microwave for too long and took it out and it's too hot and you burnt yourself. It means the actual microwaves going onto your skin. I'm fairly certain. Okay, there we go. Beer to money comes our way and we should soon be starting day shift. We should soon see that. Rooms with critical workload, zero. That's what we like to see. That's a good thing. Right, if we could complete that goal, that would be good. And then I do think as well, we might need to look at purchasing one ambulance. Because if we do that, that completes a goal. I mean, look, one, two, three ambulances there. And we don't know what's behind these. So up here, look, purchase one ambulance, increase the ambulance patients per day to two. That could be quite good. But then what happens behind that? What's the next objective? It might be something really simple like get yourself a load of plants and you get given $100,000 because the government's got a plant initiative on or something. So that'd be really good. Purchase two ambulances, more people come in via the ambulances. So it all kind of would escalate up. It would all work, but we just need to buy some ambulances. Although people have said, please don't do that quite yet. You need to get like general surgery in or something like that. So that is something that we possibly could consider. Um, but I mean, yeah, we have got one operating lounge right now. I think we must be at um, almost five patients treated. In fact, there's four people waiting in the waiting room over here. So that will be done very quickly indeed. Um, oh, crikey. 
Right, where are you? There's no free bed. Um, and oh no, hang on. You can go to you can go to intensive care. You need it. Oh, we just need this to be bigger. Hang on, somebody else has nicked his bed. Or is he going into high dependency? Because something's gone wrong. Um, could we move... Hang on, hang on. Pause time. Could we move somebody else? Um, you have a knee dislocation. You have a deep wound on your foot. And you have a deep wound on your hand. Could we put you into intensive care? One of these people needs to go into intensive care. Or do you need to go into intensive care? I'm not entirely sure. Regular hospitalisation. What was your problem? You couldn't go into high dependency. You could go into intensive care, though. That'll give them something to do. That will give them something to do. You can go into intensive care. And we've completed that objective, which is very good. We get given the five grand. That's fine. So now what do we need to do? Enable hospitalization at traumatology. OK, that's going to be quite expensive because we are going to need to build an awful lot of exciting things. Why is that flashing on and off? What's the problem with that? Why is traumatology flashing on and off? What's the warning for? Hospitalization's not done. Yeah, that, we know that. That's fine. We know that's not done. That's okay. We just got this little bit set up over here for now. Um, okay. So I think that's going to be hugely expensive, isn't it? The burn unit's going to be a lot of money. High dependency is going to be expensive. Cardiography is going to be expensive. It's all going to be really costly. We're not going to get that done with 30 grand. So I think we need to run time on a little bit. I'm very tempted to buy the ambulances just to see what are the things are hidden behind that. I mean, if at the end of the day we have a decent amount of money, I might possibly go for it. We'll see what happens because the ambulance might bring in lots of people. It might bring in many, many people that need operating on. They could come down here, have an operation because the ambulance is going to pull up there. And if it's an emergency, and this is our emergency department, and they can come straight in and have the operation. Look, somebody's already being operated on there. It's already happening. Look, what's happening with you? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Slow time down. What's going on here? Um, you've got chest pains. Um, so Dr. Okamoon is trying to work out what's going on. So you've had, oh, you've had all sorts of things done too, but we're still not quite sure whether it's one of these many things. Thoracic gunshot. I mean, you could you could rule that out quite easily, couldn't you? You go, hello, have you been shot by a gun? And they would go, no. You go, ah, it's not a gunshot wound. And the same with the stab wound. Hello, madam. Have you been stabbed recently? No, I have not. Ah, then it's not a stab wound. I think maybe you could find that out by talking to them. Unless they're completely unconscious. In which case, that does make sense. Because they obviously can't respond. I'm intrigued. What's going on then? So we have Dr. Oakmoon doing quite a lot of work over here. You're doing many things to work out what is. Okay, you've brought it down to one of five options now. But we're still not entirely sure. <laughs> so it could be lupus, hemothorax, which is a Pokemon, I'm fairly certain, um, iron deficiency anemia, pulmonary embolism. Isn't that bad? Isn't that really bad? Isn't that like heart attack stuff? Or mitral valve prolapse. Okay, I don't really know what that is, but okay. Um, I mean, can we help her? She's under observation. So maybe that will help narrow this down a bit more. So yeah, if she continues to have like low iron in her blood then we'll know it's that one there okay yeah that's fine that's good we can go with that look got 44 grand almost that's quite nice um you're being called you're going in to see dr penge yay wonderful it is iron deficiency anemia okay so you can be treated go and queue up buy something from the pharmacy that was some money and then you're on your way wonderful well thank you for stopping by it's been lovely to uh, lovely to have you here what are we on? Yeah, about 46 and a half grand. It would be nice if we could get a little bit more because our wages are going to be quite expensive now because we have many, many people working in the hospital on both daytime and night shift. But um, yeah, it's OK because I like the fact we don't shut now. It just carries on. We don't have the thing saying, yeah, the clinic is closed or whatever. It just carries on. Just, you know, hospital ticks over into nighttime. But yeah, we do need to. Whoa, that was a chunk of wage that went out then. Ouch. OK. Fine, fine, that's okay. That's the way it's got to be. We're going to lose money, but never mind. So I think now, uh, clear all those notifications out the corner. Let's go on until morning and we'll see how much money we get. We have got, hang on, we have got our person over here in intensive care <laughs> because we just wanted to use the bed. They've got carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, 
I don't know if necessarily they need to be in intensive care, but they are, and that's what's happening to them, because we want to make sure they're okay, because your health is important, friend. Um, but yeah, let's speed time on, shall we, until the morning, and then we'll see what money we have left, because, yeah, it's going to be quite difficult for us to buy an ambulance with a lack of any money whatsoever. Um, oh, no. Bad weather and low temperatures cause 15% more... Oh, no. That's good. Cause 15% more of your patients to come to the clinic. Oh, that's a good thing. I thought it was going to be 15% down because it was you know, cold and miserable. No, people are getting ill. It's flu season. I was going to say good. It's not good for the people who are you know, ill, but it's good for us. 15% more people should, in theory, equate to about 15% more money, which could help us out quite a bit. So I wonder, by the end of day 23, so by sort of you know, the end of the day shift of day 23, I wonder if we will have enough money to buy an ambulance. Hang on, remind me, game. How much was an ambulance? Again, I've completely forgotten. Just there. Was it 35 grand? Yeah, a dollar short of 35 grand. Round it up, please. So that would be quite good. That would be good to get one of those in. Okay, do you know what? It's fine. That's what we're going to do. I've made the decision. We built a whole new shiny department, and that was good. We built the department, and that was wonderful. Um, hang on, can we see if it's doing anything? Um, yeah, look at that. About, what, half five in the morning, there's somebody waiting, people are being spoken to. Yeah, that's really good. So people are coming in, even at these early times. Right, that's all good. And we're down to 28 grand. Okay, so let's move time on nice and fast until, yes, roughly the end of day 23. And then, well, sort of, you know, end of, end of the day shift of day 23. And we'll see what money we have left to play with. But that could be exciting. If we could get an ambulance in, that'd be good. But then again, then again. Do we get an ambulance or do we then save the money to enable hospitalization over here in traumatology? Would that not be a better use of our money? I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just want an ambulance because it's got exciting flashy lights and it goes Nino. Um, okay, you're getting tired of waiting. You are in you are in our trauma thing. You've got a microwave burn. Okay, can we please prioritize you? Can we make you important? Um, you are, you're, what are you doing? You're going to a chair. You're just sort of wandering about the place. Okay, we're going to make sure that we see you, Fraser, Fraser Smith. Although you are wandering off. Ah, you nip into the loo. That's fine. That's acceptable. We do need to build some toilets up there, actually. That would help. Grab a quick drink. Come all the way back. Okay, hopefully you can be called in next. Because we have code blue to use. There you go. Right, so you've been seen. Yep, it's a microwave burn. We know it is because... Bit, that, that's obvious, look, so we can tell it's a microbe burn. So, yes, get that treated. That's all very good for us. You'll be sorted. We don't need to worry about that. Money is on, what's that? About 40, 49 grand-ish at lunchtime. That is going up quite a lot. That's going up quite a lot. Oh, and Ken is now a master scientist. Well done, Ken. Very impressive indeed. Hang on a second. So do we now choose a specialization for Ken? So Ken is one of our lab technicians. I'm fairly certain that Ken works in the blood lab. So he does all the blood analysis stuff. So I don't really think neurology is going to be that helpful, Ken. I would say you should go down the route of advanced biochemistry because it says right there, advanced biochemistry increases the effectiveness of lab tests, which is what you do. That's your job. So that does make sense. So how about you go down that route, please? That's going to be a little bit more helpful. So there we go. That's quite good. He's picked up a very handy new skill. I think also, have we given him $800? Does he get a bonus for levelling up for becoming a master scientist as opposed to a whatever the middle grade scientist is? I think maybe he just got himself a great big bonus. But you know what? That's fine, Ken. You're worth it. And now also, you're a, you know, a little bit skilled, sort of, in advanced biochemistry, which is all very good as well. So that's wonderful. I like it when they level up. And to celebrate, I think he went and just stood outside. I think he was handing a he was waiting for somebody to hand a sample over. I think it was. I think that's what happened. But look, he's kind of using the machines and they're standing around. Yeah. OK, so it's looking very busy in there. Right. How are we doing back over here? Oh, Danny Yuri has leveled up. <laughs> well, of course, Danny Yuri has leveled up. Hang on a second. Hang on, because now we get to pick a specialization for Danny Yuri. I would say that maybe being a gift shop vendor is not Danny Yuri's thing. Manager. 
manager material. Absolutely. Yes, please. You can go down that route. And maybe one day you can manage your own team of janitors, Danny Yuri. But um, OK, that's very good. Right. Hang on. Hang on. I was going to have a look at something. So pondering buying an ambulance. We have got the money to do so just about. Um, but what do we get if we enable hospitalization over here at Traumatology? What do we actually get? What is the exciting prize? We get 10,000 monies. Okay, right, I see. So Protect Care, send us a few people, and those people do pay quite well for the treatments that we give them, but their rewards are really meagre compared to the rewards we get up here. Because up here, it's like, yeah, you get $50,000, get $75,000 or whatever we've seen. And that down there, five grand and then 10 grand. It's a little bit measly, isn't it? So I'm thinking maybe, even if we just get one ambulance, that might unlock something exciting over here with liver TY. I think that is what we focus on. So there we go. The decision has been made. We now just need to make sure we have enough money to you know, be able to afford the ambulance and everybody's wages. Also, I've left those things in the corridor. Hang on a second. <laughs> we don't need those there. Sorry, everybody. Hang on. Got some things to remove. Um, yeah, let's, let's get rid of those. Look, we'll get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. Hooray, that's 88 more dollars toward the ambulance fund. Okay, hang on a second. Jordan Miller is lacking a bed. Okay, what is happening with you? You have dislocated your ankle, which is very, very unpleasant sounding indeed. But you do need to go to a bed. We could put you in intensive care. We could put you in high dependency. You could go into either of those. I think let's put you into high dependency for now. At least you can go somewhere. At least it's a place for you to go. Is that down in... um? down over here again. Is that ward full again? Um, no, there are three beds. There is a vacant bed just there. Why didn't he go to that bed? That seems a little bit strange, but okay. Yeah, long wait for bed. And it was orthopedics. Well, hang on, where are you now then? Um, oh, you're over there. You're over in this bit. You're over in kind of our regular hospitalization stuff. Oh, okay. That seems a bit strange, but okie doke. I thought it said there wasn't room. Well, clearly there is, because you're in a bed over there. That seems a little bit strange, but right you are. Right, yeah, the end of the sort of day shift is coming round. So we've got 60 grand. It's ticking up ever so slightly as more people pay us more lovely monies. Um, yeah, there we go. The pharmacy doing a little bit more trade as well, which is wonderful. Right, so the money comes out. 44 grand. Not quite enough to buy an ambulance, unfortunately. We'll have to wait a little longer, I think. But it's fine. It's fine. Soon we'll have an ambulance and it'll be very exciting. It can rush out and pick people up and bring people back. And it'll be all very dramatic and we can get people dashing out of the ambulance on carts and they can be carried to other places. It's all going to be very exciting indeed. But um, but yeah, I think we have to wait a while to get that in because, yeah, we're not going to earn loads of money on the day shift, on the night shift, sorry, I wouldn't say. And then we're going to pay the wages out. So then it might be that we have to wait until the end of day 24, possibly, which is a bit of a shame because that'd be quite nice to get one in, wouldn't it? But never mind. Yeah, we can just afford one now and have a teeny tiny bit of money left over. I mean, we could, in theory, go to the bank. We could go to the bank and get ourselves some money out, but I think that would be ill-advised. I don't think we want to borrow any more money from the bank. We want to make sure that we're not spending all of our cash on, you know, sort of uh, loan interest payments and things. It'd be nice if we could pay that back. But alas, I don't think we're going to do that anytime soon. How are we looking over here? Looking very busy. Oh, yeah, all four beds are full. And one person in high dependency as well. I mean, that could be quite good in terms of money. Let's speed time on until the morning. Let's see what happens in terms of our morning income from these. Because that's a lot of people in beds. That could make us a decent amount of cash that we could then use to buy an ambulance. Not that I'm obsessed with buying a thing with flashy lights that goes Nino anymore, but I'm a little bit obsessed with that. Oh, okay. Christopher Miller has waited too long to see a doctor and they've decided to give up and go elsewhere. Um, okay. That's possibly fine. I mean, whereabouts are you? Hang on. You're in here. I mean, you should have been seen by a doctor. There should be a couple about overnight. Yeah, there's those two there. So you should have been seen. Um... Oh, never mind. Sorry. Cheerio. Don't bad mouth us, please. We did okay. But there you go. Just, you know, out the door and away he goes. Okay, never mind. That's not so bad. Right, the night shift is done. So we go down to 40,000. Um, okay, Elizabeth Wilson. HDU hospitalizer. Just, just put them in a bed. Just put them in a bed somewhere. It's fine. If they're going to have an operation, they can go and have the operation. They can go back to a bed. 
As long as I can lie down in a bed somewhere, it's going to be fine. Getting their scrubs on. A few people in the comments, I think, did say that we should kind of have, a bit of a lag there, um, have a little bit of a kind of a separate room between where they do their sort of, you know, their scrubs and wash their hands and such like, and the main room itself. Because a few people did, so they're kind of separate things. So maybe we should put like a glass like a glass wall along there or something, just to kind of break it up a bit. But I think it's fine for now. It seems to work okay. What's going on here? What's happening? Um, Elizabeth Wilson is being treated for a knee dislocation. That sounds thoroughly unpleasant. Please put her knee back so it is not dislocated. Relocate it, please, post haste. Okay, so it's about 3.30 in the afternoon and we have just over 60,000 of the monies. Oh, and somebody else needs some help. Um, you can go into high dependency. Yeah, we need a bigger ward over there. We need a bigger ward. That ward there is now not big enough. We need more beds, we need more stuff. Um, oh, crikey. We can't treat endoscopic surgery. Um, no, I don't suppose we can. I don't quite know how we go about sorting that out. What do we need? We need somebody who can do endoscopic surgery. I don't think we have anybody that can do that kind of thing. Margaret Wright, you might possibly have to go somewhere else. Oh, that's almost 3,000 of the monies. But as it stands right now, you cannot be treated. And there's no point even doing HDU hospitalization, is there? There's no point putting you into high dependency because we simply can't treat that. There's nothing we can do. How do we get endoscopic surgery sorted? Is it a special type of room? Is it a thing? Special type of surgery type room? Is it over there? What were they? Hang on a second. Hang on. That was diagnostic and cardiography. Is it a general surgery type thing? It might be... It might be one of these. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Um, or it's a skill. Maybe it's a skill that a particular doctor has, it might be a doctor skill. Um, okay, do you know what? I'm really sorry, you're gonna have to go elsewhere, which makes me a bit sad because, um, yeah, we can't treat you. We can't do anything with it. We haven't got endoscopic surgery. Um, and have we? Hospitalization required for the treatment is not available. Check free, but oh, hang on. Can we put you into, can we put you into one of the beds? And somebody could do that later. Oh my goodness me osteomyelitis surgery what the orthopedics is just absolutely heaving um okay we can't do anything about that right now because we just don't have enough beds <laughs> it's just so busy over in orthopedics right now um right lisa hernandez is leaving i'm very sorry lisa hernandez sorry you have to go and get it sorted out somewhere else somewhere which is way more organized if you can believe that such a place exists but um yeah the money I mean, it's coming up to the end of the day. So if we get to eight o'clock and we see what money we have left, we could treat ourselves to an ambulance and then hope that overnight we actually you know, make enough money to keep going and pay the wages and such like. So let's get through to eight o'clock and we'll see how we get on. Oh my goodness me. Go to intensive care then. <laughs> right. We need more beds. I think that's the moral of the story. We need more beds to do more stuff. But okay, that's fine. We'll get that sorted in a bit. Um, yeah, where's the person that we just sent to intensive care? Are they on their way? Are they on their way to intensive care? It's taking a while. Good job they're not actually in desperate need of the intensive care because they're taking a very long time. Right, so we are down to 48,309. I think it might be a bit of a push to get an ambulance, but it would be very exciting indeed. And it would reveal what is unlocked after we get that goal out of the way. So that objective would disappear. We're going to get two ambulance patients per day that might pay a decent amount of money because, look, yeah, they pay 120% of the sort of cost. So that's quite good. Um, and behind there might be something really easy. It might be something that we've done. It might be something that we can complete with relative ease. So I think that's what we do. I think we treat ourselves to an ambulance to go with the wonderful, exciting new traumatology department because I kind of feel like, you know, an ambulance would bring somebody in who suffered some sort of trauma that would be treated in traumatology. Maybe not in the clinic bit, maybe more in the kind of, you know, the hospitalization bit, but still, I think an ambulance would be quite good for that. But you know what we will do? We will get an ambulance next time out. That can be job number one, because I think if we do it now, we're going to sort of you know, get the ambulance and then we're going to finish up and that will be a bit sad. So we want to enjoy the ambulance and all of its glory in an entire new fresh video, I think. So I think that's what we will do. 
finish up for now. Whilst things are looking pretty good, you know, we're making some very good money. I'm quite happy with that. So, um, yeah, we're making some good cash. Got a new whole department in. We have our fourth sort of insurance company on board, which is very good. So, yeah, we'll finish up now, come back next time and treat ourselves to an ambulance, which should be very good indeed, because long have we planned for it. And finally, an ambulance shall become a reality in our hospital, which is wonderful stuff. But uh, yeah, all that to look forward to next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Yay! Okay, exciting things are happening. Where does Gigantic Big Stabby Knife live? They're D&D nerding. They've got a dice tower, and they've got character sheets, and they've got some dice. Oh, this is wonderful. Look at my best life. Oh my goodness me, so much undergarmentage. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Praise be, the kettle has been uncovered.